All right, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, talking up West Virginia. We got Skylar Callahan on the line from Dub V Nation, joins us on a regular basis to talk up those Mountaineers. Before we dive into the football, of course, you can help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below. Also, two exclusive live streams that you can catch with me. If you grab the link below that says Voice of College Football Community, two exclusive live streams, one in which I bring you on to talk college football with me, the other one where I respond to your viewer comments, and I appreciate that we've got over 40,000 viewer comments year to date. So thank you so much for that. Now let's talk West Virginia football and uh, the dead period in regards to just talking football period. Spring football is way in the rear view mirror. And of course, we're a couple of weeks away from uh, Big 12 media days. But uh, in regards to recruiting, you did have a nice stretch of signing some, uh, well, not signing, but getting those hard commits from some kids. And, and uh, one in particular uh, catches everyone's eye out of New Jersey, a top 20 player nationally at his position, offensive guard Chris Mayo and uh, some other ones, Skyler. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Chris Mayo, I, I thought, kind of shocked some people uh, with his West Virginia decision. I mean, not so much on the West Virginia side. I think a lot of Kentucky folks thought he was going to go to Kentucky. Uh, some Purdue people thought he may have went to Purdue. But at the end of the day, it was it was it was a strong connection with West Virginia and, and the relationship he had with his co with the coaching staff there. And he told me that really the thing that won him over was the fact that you are going to be developed as a man first and then a player at West Virginia. So that's something that really stuck out with him, and it's really sticking out with a lot of these recruits that Neil Brown's going after. They're really starting to understand the culture that he's laying uh, down in Morgantown. Good stuff. we got Skylar Callahan on the line talking West Virginia football. You can join him and the rest of the crew there at Dub V Nation. You've also got a podcast, right, uh, Skylar? Yeah, you, yeah it's a Between the Years podcast. You can catch us on any streaming device. Uh, we also are live if you're in the greater Charleston uh, West Virginia area on AM 950 every Friday at 6 p.m. So be sure to catch Chris and I. Um, and another thing that we're going to be doing this upcoming season is uh, DVN Game Day, which is Brandon Lowe and myself. We're going to kind of do our own little version of College Game Day. Uh, probably three or four hours prior to kickoff each Saturday, we're going to go live on Facebook and, and just preview the game and uh, the big games around the Big 12. So join us on there as well. And it's, it's going to be a blast. So I can't wait for it. And it was only two weeks ago that you got a uh, cornerback commitment out of a kid out of Maryland, uh, top 42 at his position. Also, uh, of course, uh, people lock in on the quarterbacks. Garrett Green's a really good one, top 15 prospect uh, out of uh, Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah, Green's, he's, he's really impressing a lot of people right now, and his stock is continuing to rise. He's been in the Elite 11 and has really showed up there. I think his team even won the 7-on-7 seven -seven championships uh, either today or yesterday. So. He's doing really, really well, and he, he almost fits the Neil Brown mold. He's a guy that can escape out of the pocket, use his legs. He's very quick, but he also has a very live arm. So it's going to be interesting to see how his arm develops. I don't think it's quite there yet, but you can see he's got some zip on the ball, and I think it's got a, you know a college-ready arm maybe by his, his redshirt freshman year as early as that. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football. We're talking West Virginia. we got Skylar Callahan on the line from Dub V Nation. We've looked at uh, West Virginia's offense, so check out that video with a number of uh, looks at obviously all the key positions with the offense as prolific as it was last year with arguably the best quarterback in the country, three elite receivers, tremendous left tackle who's left as well. Uh, maybe the defense or the offense takes a step back. You could get away with having the 74th ranked uh, defense uh, in yards per game, 60th in scoring uh, because you you came that close to winning a Big 12 championship or getting to the championship game, of course, with that disappointing loss at home against uh, OU 59-56. But the defense is going to have to be better, you would think, this year to stay in Big 12 contention. Absolutely. And it's going to be better. I don't know if it's going to be better right away just because of the departures. You know, you've got Kenny Robinson, uh, EJ Brown, and Derek Pitts, all three safeties that have either transferred or put their name into the transfer portal. So, when you have three guys like that, and, and really two with Pitts and Robinson being main contributors or starters or guys that they had depended on in, in the last couple of years, that's going to hurt. I mean, we're, we're talking about a, a guy, in Kenny Robinson, that was an all-Big 12 safety. I mean, this is a guy that's probably going to be a top you know, two, three-round draft pick either as early as next year or the year after. So when you have to replace guys like that, it's not easy. And you also got to replace a guy like David Long, 
who was arguably one of the most underrated linebackers, if not defenders in the entire country last year. And I think, you know, just trying to replace these guys, you know, we talk about all the star, star power that the offense has to replace. There's a lot of star power that the defense has to replace. And to do that in a completely new scheme and under a completely new coaching staff, it's not going to be easy. So it's, it's going to be, uh, I would say, very – you're going to have to be very patient if you're a Mountaineer fan. I would not expect this defense to turn into a top 50 defense overnight, but I do think they're going to be a top 50 defense within a couple of years. Vic Coning runs a completely different scheme, like I said. Out goes the 3-3-5, which a lot of fans who dreaded here in West Virginia. It, it just was an absolute nightmare every time that West Virginia lined up against a power run team. They could not stop that run, so – Having guys like Vandarius Cowan, the Alabama transfer who sat out last year, he's going to be eligible this year. That is a huge pickup that can maybe help fill the void of, of a guy like David Long heading off to the NFL. So, again, there's a lot of star power on the offense, but there is some on the defense that is going to have to be replaced too. And it's going to be interesting to see how they go about plugging these these holes and gaps on the defense. Yeah, the production uh, from David Long, as you mentioned, and he was the guy that uh, grabbed most of the attention of the offensive coordinators and also the fans because uh, he was pretty well known. 108 tackles, 19 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks. And you mentioned Kenny Robinson. He's a defection that just came down, what was that, about four to six weeks ago uh, yeah. that he's leaving the program. And uh, most likely leaving the program four picks last year was second on the team in tackles with 77. So they lose their tackle production right off the top and probably the biggest playmaker other than those guys. Uh, uh, Giovanni Stewart had 10 and a half tackles for loss and four sacks. So who's waiting in the wings? Who, who do you like that uh, needs to break through here? Well, if you're talking about high recruited guys, I would definitely take a look at Quantel Reigns. This is a guy that was highly recruited out of Aliquippa. Uh, Pennsylvania a couple of years ago. He redshirted last year, saw action in a couple of games just to get his feet wet and was able to re to, to maintain his redshirt. So I would assume maybe a guy like Quantel Reigns, uh, Josh Norwood, who played mainly corner cornerback last year, he's moving to safety. So they're going to have to move some pieces around. They're, I don't think that they're going to pretty much – I don't think they're going to know their guys week one. They're going to have to be you know moving these puzzle pieces around until they figure out what fits them right because – even though these players are adjusting to a new coaching staff, you got to also think too, the coaching staff is adjusting to these players. They have no clue what these guys can do in a game like situation. It could be a completely different setup in practice, but when you're playing live and you're in front of 60,000 fans in Morgantown, things can be a lot different, especially when you're playing against big 12 opponents like Oklahoma and Texas and Iowa state and stuff like that. So uh, as far as, you know, who's going to fill in, it's going to be really intriguing and it's and it's going to be difficult to, to, to really watch, I think, the first couple of weeks until they figure out who those guys are. And I think even some JUCO guys like Noah Guzman, who just committed to, to West Virginia roughly two, three weeks ago, he's going to probably get into the two deep at some point this season. But I would also look at some young guys that, uh, you know, could step up early, uh, maybe even up to Corey Turner, which he's, he's a true freshman. I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time, but you just never know. Um, you got to take a look at all these guys and uh, just see who, what fits best.